Welcome to the enigmatic sanctuary of Paranormal M. Uncover the extraordinary by hitting subscribe and turning on notifications and dropping a comment. Join us as we delve into the depths of the unexplained with our latest perplexing tales. We hope you find it as fascinating as we do. I think my grandfather is trying to communicate with me. Basically, my grandfather sadly passed away at 90 a few years ago. I was too young for it to process back then. I was around seven. And so, I never really mourned him or dwelled on it. While doing my grandmother a favor and cleaning the spare bedroom for her, the room that he passed away in, keep in mind, I saw the flat cap that my grandfather used to wear nearly every day if he went out to do something in the garden or just around the house. After seeing it, I asked my grandmother about it, and she said that I could have it. I remind her of him, and she's trying to get over his death still a few years later. So I finished up in the bedroom, went downstairs, and had a nice chat with my grandmother then went back to my house. I put the flat cap on my chest of drawers, next to my TV. I see it every night before I go to bed, pretty much. After about three or four days later, I started having weird, kind of streams of energy go through my chest and jolt me awake whenever I would try to go to sleep. I usually just brush it off and continue attempting to go to sleep. Insomnia runs in my father and mother's sides of the family. It was mostly manageable, and I'm only writing this because recently, as we get closer to my grandmother and grandfather's wedding anniversary, the activity has started to become more intense and frequent. I might sound a bit off of my rocker, but I swear, sometimes I'll see a silhouette facing me from outside my window or sometimes hear his voice whisper when I'm home alone. Just yesterday we celebrated my grandmother's birthday, and the presence was way stronger than what I was now accustomed to, over the past few months anyway. I kept on seeing his face and everywhere that I would look, from wallpaper to tree branches and leaves forming his facial features. I took it as a good sign that he wasn't here to cause any harm or be an annoyance. But when I came home from the party, it seemed like things just were off. A general uneasy feeling in the hairs on my neck were standing as if something or someone was observing me. I was too tired to care. It was a long day from uni and the party, so I just got into bed and brushed it off. That night I recall having an extremely vivid dream, and in it, me and my grandfather were talking outside on a park bench, the same park of the town he grew up in. Most of my mom's family lived there, and his presence there wasn't completely visible. I recall having a long and deep conversation with him about my family, his childhood, and other things I can't remember off the top of my head. At the end of the conversation, most likely when I was nearly waking up, he kept on saying that I need to start visiting my grandmother more, and he said she doesn't have long left. What should I do? I don't want to cleanse the spirit as he's my grandfather, obviously. Not sure what happened. When I was 16, we moved into the last house we lived in in my hometown. This is in South Carolina, before moving north. The road was a horseshoe. Now, a bunch of different things happened in the house and in the area. I'll start with the first encounter. The original owner of the house, her brother had cancer, died in one of the rooms. That room was always cold, and you would hear things during the night. Beeps like medical stuff. Sometimes even breathing. I refused to go in that room by myself. 
until the night my dad and I saw something in my room. It was about 1 a.m., maybe 1.30 a.m. My dad and I were standing in the kitchen, looking at the TV in the living room. It's an open concept house. We were making something to snack on. All of a sudden, my dad looks at me, extremely white-faced for a man that's Native American and always tan, and asked why there was a light underneath my door. I turned, saw something walk behind the door. I froze. My TV and lights were off and my door was closed while I was out in the living room with my dad. We finally found the strength to go and open the door. Nothing was in there, but my TV was on, the light was on, and it was freezing in my room. We didn't talk about it for a while. For the next month or so, I slept in the room that the brother died in. The second thing that happened, happened to my dad. Now my dad is not a small dude, he's 5'11 and 250 pounds, mainly muscle. He's also an army vet, and we are big believers of God. My dad has a huge fear of dying while being awake. He was lying in bed almost asleep when he noticed a glow in his room. My mom was asleep next to him, so she didn't see anything. He opened his eyes and saw a white entity floating next to his dresser, staring at him. When he told us, he said he didn't feel any fear, but felt completely relaxed. He put his head under the blankets and went to sleep, thinking he was going to wake up the next day. This hasn't happened since. He believes it was an angel coming to comfort him from the stress he was dealing with. Now this last encounter still freaks me the fuck out. Every night after dinner, I would sneak some of my mom's cigarettes. I was 16. Walk around the corner from the house to call friends. This was an everyday occurrence. Up the road from my house was this beautiful house that had a story that the owner of the house, my mom was friends with the wife, and that they were shot and killed in the house. I always felt cold when I walked by the house, even in 100 degree weather. I'm not sure how true the story is, but there was something in that house. Anyway, the way the road was, you came down a hill on my side of the road. Remember, it was a horseshoe. Go past my house, around the corner, down a slight hill, up a slight hill, and around the other corner, and out the other end of the road. I would walk to the second driveway around the corner from my house because he couldn't see me from my house. One night it's about 8 p.m. and I'm on the phone. I look down the road right between where the hill goes toward. It stopped and the hill going away started. And I swear I saw somebody standing there. But only from the corner of my eye. If I looked straight at him, he'd fade into the tree line. I acted like I didn't see him and started walking toward my house. He was a good distance away from me, so unless he ran, there was no way he caught up with me like he did. I was speed walking and calling my house phone for my mom to let the dogs out. She didn't answer. I called every cell phone in that house and nobody answered. I looked behind and he had to be like 50 feet away. I saw jeans, a white t-shirt, and work boots, also hearing them hit the road. I was almost to the corner where my house was when I heard, Hey baby, in a deep male voice. I took the fuck off. I turn around and he's gone, but I didn't stop. But here's what freaks me out. I didn't hear him run back up the road into the woods or into the neighbor's yard. Their dogs would have barked, and I ran inside, freaking out, and my dad asked what happened. Him, my boyfriend at the time, and her friend went around the road. Didn't find a thing. We went into the woods the next day to see if we could find a shack or anything. Nothing. After that, I refused to walk around that road by myself, especially at night. One day, my boyfriend and I were walking down the road when I felt the hair on my back of my head being tugged, like hard, like 
hard enough that my head was pulled backwards. I freaked. I kept having recurring dreams where the guy chased me to the front of my yard and tackled me and either stabbed or shot me. I swear I saw him in my bedroom window a couple of times. My window is only about three feet off the ground. Weird things kept happening until we left. I still don't know who it was that night, but I can't forget that feeling of absolute terror. This isn't the first or last thing to happen to me in my life. Depending on how this post does, I'll post other occurrences. The Dress I live in what was once a small town in Minnesota. Recently, the population has been booming, but that's besides the point. My town was founded back in 1853, and the house I live in is one of the original farmhouses. The previous owner died, and the house was left to rot for multiple years. We brought this house in 2011, and we try to fix it up. Ever since moving in, there's been so many paranormal experiences that I've lost count, and I'd like to share some on this sub. Starting with my first ever experience when I was around 8 years old, this is not necessarily a scary experience. It's just one that's stuck with me my whole life. In my living room, there's a very large window looking out into the street. And one day I was with my sister, my mom, and my grandma, and I suddenly got the urge to move the blinds and just, you know, look outside. Can't explain why I felt like doing this, but when I did, I looked over to my mailbox, which is right next to the street. And the first thing I noticed is this large pink dress. It was flowing in the wind, seemingly attached to my mailbox by some string or rope. For a minute, I just sat there looking at it. It was a very pretty dress, and my eight-year-old mind was ensnared by it. But soon enough, I call over to my sister to come have a look at this beautiful dress attached to our mailbox. Obviously, she has no idea what I'm talking about. Gives me a confused look and comes over to see this dress. To my surprise, thinking back, the dress was still there even when I looked away from it, and even more surprising, when my sister comes to look at it, she sees it too. Super untypical for ghost stories. We're both staring at this dress when my mom finally realizes what we're doing and asks. We tell her what we're seeing, but when my mom finally comes over to look, the dress is gone, completely vanishes in the span of about four seconds. And I know it would be impossible for her to have went and blown away in the wind, quote-unquote. I just missed it because, for one, I looked away for less than a few seconds. And two, the street is relatively big with a hill on the other side. Where, if it were to blow, it would have landed on this hill. The Woman I live in kind of a small town in Minnesota. Recently, the population has been booming, but that's beside the point. My town was founded back in 1853, and the house I live in is some sort of original farmhouse. If you're having deja vu, guys, I too. The narrator, I'm having deja vu. But I digress. The previous owner died in the house and was left to rot for multiple years. We bought this house in 2011 and fixed it up. Ever since moving in, there's been so many paranormal experiences that I've lost count. I'd like to share some on this sub. For maybe a little over a year now, I've had two very quick but extremely distinct experiences of something resembling a woman. Doing what almost seems like watching me. Until I notice... The first time it happened was when I was in my dining room doing a quick after-school workout with my dad. The way that I was facing was towards the kitchen, 
And in the kitchen, there's a window in my kitchen which looks out into the right side of my backyard. I was just finishing some kettleball set. For some reason, I glanced up at the window. Instead of seeing a large tree in my backyard, I see the top half of what looks like a woman in a white gown darting away from the window. It's the middle of spring, so there's no snow outside to get confused with. And anyway, I go over to the kitchen, get a drink, but also to look out the window and see what it was that I just saw. I thought maybe it could have been my sister's, but when I checked again, they were sitting on the couch behind me in the living room. I have no idea what this was, and it kind of freaked me out when I first, well, when it first happened. I thought this could have been a trick on my mind until a couple of months later. This is when one of the most horrifying experiences I've ever had occurred. My room in my house is in the attic. We redid it and made it into a very large bedroom. Because the attic wasn't finished when we bought the house, there's a large brick chimney on the side of my room coming up from the ground and out the roof. To the right of that chimney is the corner of my room where my Xbox and PC are. Because this area where I'm typing this Reddit post right now is tucked into the corner, I can't hear if somebody were to walk up my stairs, especially if my headphones are on. I also cannot see it. The other side of the chimney where I'm sitting in my chair because, you know, my little sister often likes to sneak up here at night and scare me before she goes to bed. It's really annoying, but to be honest, I don't really care that much. So, one night I was playing on the Xbox at like 11 p.m. When again, for some odd reason, I decided to look down over my shoulder toward the bottom left of my chimney. What I saw was someone's foot quickly put behind the chimney to the part where I can't see it. At first I wasn't scared, laughed it off because, well, thought my sister had tried and failed to sneak behind my chimney in order to scare me. I called out her name telling her that I had seen her and that she wasn't going to scare me. I waited a minute but no one responded. It was just dead silent. I got a little annoyed because I had to get up from what I was doing and get her. To my absolute horror, there was nobody on that other side of the chimney. At this point, I got a little freaked out, but still started to look around my room for her. I searched every single centimeter of my room, and when I was fully freaked out, I called downstairs to my sister and she responded from her room. The foot that I saw pulled back from behind that chimney was so unbelievably vivid. But the worst part is, when I looked over to see that foot at first, I didn't look up, I looked down. What part of this thing did I not see other than its foot? Was this thing just there staring at me while I was really wasn't paying attention? How long had it been standing there? The next day, I just thought it was weird that I had two experiences where it almost felt like something or someone was looking at me. Maybe even staring at me for an indefinite period of time until I saw them. The Lockbox Last summer I went on a cruise to Mexico and Honduras. The port was in Galveston, Texas. Me and my family love to go antique stores whenever we're out on vacation. One day we stopped by this antique store on the street. It was relatively big. It had three floors. Each designated to different items. Such as the third floor being only for furniture. We were looking for a while when suddenly I made my way up to the third floor. I instantly got this really weird, eerie feeling. Probably because the third floor was completely dead silent in comparison to the crowded first floor. Despite the feelings, I continued to look around when I found a small, cramped room. This room which was connected to another larger room that was specifically for old lock boxes and briefcases. In the middle of this larger room was a lockbox sitting atop a stand of some sort. This box 
had a three-digit combo on it. For some godforsaken reason, my brain decided that since I'd gotten a disturbing feeling coming up here, it would be a good idea to put 666 in the combo. Who knows? Maybe it would work, and it would be a very creepy story to tell people, so... Well, I did that, and was going to change it back to what it was before. But then my mom ends up calling my phone right before I was about to revert it, telling me that they're leaving. Not thinking twice, I rush downstairs, not wanting to get left behind. Days go by, and I realize I didn't revert that combo on the super weird displayed centerpiece lockbox on the disturbing third floor in the random antique store. That is, back from 666 to what it was before. I can't help but think that this mistake has done something weird to the experiences in my house. Later on, I'll write more experiences in the sub and make references to the lockbox for more clarification. The whole vibe of that third floor creeps me out when I think about it. When I look back at it, this lockbox was set up so weirdly in a kind of sunlit room. It was displayed in the middle on a stand in the scary third floor of a random antique store in Galveston. Ever since forgetting to revert it, I just feel like the experiences have been more vivid and more frequent than before. The Man I live in what was once a small town in Minnesota. Recently, the population has been booming double deja vu. But that's beside the point. My town was founded back in 1853, and the house I live in is one of the original farmhouses. The previous owner died, and the house was left to rot for multiple years. He bought this house in 2011 and fixed it up. Ever since moving in, there's been so many paranormal experiences that I've lost count, and I'd like to share some on this sub. The experience I'm writing about today just happened a few days ago. My mom's grandma, or my great-grandma, she had this really old creepy painting with like five or six clown faces that kind of just passed down through my mom's side of the family. This painting hangs in our dining room, and it's always creeped me out. I thought that it had creeped me out like two-year-old brother as well, but a couple of weeks ago I was at home by myself. I was watching him while my dad went to pick up my sister from school. We were running around the house and playing. This is when all of a sudden, once we'd entered the dining room, my brother stops dead in his tracks, looks to the side and says, Scared money. Money equals monster in his language. And points to the old painting. First, I thought nothing of it, because that painting scared me as well, and I assured him that there were no monsters, and that it was just a painting. He brushed it off, and we continued playing like normal. But now I don't think that's what was scaring him. Fast forward a couple of weeks, now just one day ago, I overhear my mom and dad talking about something my brother was saying to them at separate times, but neither of them were with him together. I come up to my mom and ask her what she was talking about. She explains to me that the day before my brother had been sitting in my dad's room on the bed staring at the window. My dad asked him what he was looking at. That was when he pointed out a large oak tree that we have in our driveway. He said, there's a man in that tree. Now my mom hadn't been home at this time, so she had no idea it happened. But it sure as hell freaked out my dad. Especially because my brother, who again is two years old and only speaks in broken sentences, had just with no stutters, no made up words, no nothing, just perfectly told my dad that terrifying complete sentence. And to make it even worse, my dad half jokingly asked, Was the man red? He said no and asked, Was he blue? No again. Finally, he asked, was he black? My brother said yes. Getting a little more freaked out, my dad then asked him, does he have a tail? He said no. 
does he have wings? He said, yes. A couple of hours go by, and when it's dark out, my brother's playing with my dad in the dining room, and he stops, looks at the painting of the clowns, and says, the man is there. Again, in an eerily perfect sentence for his age, my dad once again asked him the same questions, and once again, my brother said he was a black man with wings. However, this time, my dad asked him what did he want. My brother said, Ugh. UHG, which is his way of pronouncing my sister's name. The day went by, and as it turns out, my mom had brought up a similar experience to my dad the day after not knowing my dad experienced almost the same thing the day after she experienced it. Her story was two days ago. Her and my brother were returning home from shopping. She got my brother out of the car so we could walk inside while my mom carried the groceries. When my brother got out of the car, though, he didn't walk inside. Instead, he just stopped, stared up at that giant oak tree in the driveway where the next day he would tell my dad there was a black man with wings standing in that tree. Getting impatient and cold, we live in Minnesota, my mom didn't ask what he was looking at and told him to get inside. Now, my brother is two years old, and who knows what's going on in his imagination, but... I just think that having three separate times, times where neither three of us knew the other two had experienced this with my brother until my mom brought it up, they say something. Especially since when this is, well, this quote unquote man wanted my brother and said my sister's name. Dreams and voices, possible hallucinations too. Ever since I was little, I used to have this dream my mother and I called the corner dream. Essentially, it was a vivid dream of a corner, the ceiling corner to be specific, in one of our old houses. This came along with breathing coming from it. I was never able to see really what it was until about a week ago. I've always had this dream often, three to four times a week. Before I explain what's changed about it, please note that I have frequent sleep paralysis. Yes, Gecko. Lately in my dream, I've been able to see something, but not someone in the corner of the room in my old house. I can hear it panting and mumbling to myself, which it never used to mumble before. As cars pass by outside the window, I can briefly see what seems like horns. Not a hundred percent that they're actually horns, but there's definitely something on its head that sticks out. I usually wake up to my eldest daughter screaming and attempting to look over. I always feel like I'm being held down afterwards. And if I'm able to look to the side, there's the thing standing there in the shadows of the room. When everything ends, my daughter is 100% fine, asleep sometimes even. Earlier today, I kept hearing, can I come in? And a male's voice from my living room. My living room connects to the outside by my front door. Since my parents live next door, my father's had a camera that turns 360 that I have access to. Since I thought someone was at the door, I checked the camera. Nobody was there. But yet I kept hearing him asking. I didn't feel comfortable opening the door responding to the voice. I could just be hallucinating and having sleep paralysis. But it all seems too coincidental. This isn't the first time I've heard a random male voice throughout the house either. My book characters are coming to life. All but two characters are based on real people that I know. The villain and the love interest. The villain's in real life counterpart happens to be a co-worker. I knew he looked familiar though, so I brushed it off, but it wasn't until he introduced himself to me that I finally realized who he reminded me of. 
my coworker shared the exact same name, looks, and height of the exact outfit the villain wears in the story. He hadn't gotten a uniform yet. It was uncanny. This happened back in late July. So my encounters with him were few and far in between after this, due to school starting up. I started journaling after this, for my own sake. I jokingly said in the first entry, why couldn't it have been, you know, her instead? On August 27th, I saw him. The love interest's counterpart was also identical to the original. Same name, same height, same hair and eye color. At this point, I had already told my friends about the encounter with the villain. Except this is what really scared me. Why would this happen twice? Denial runs in my blood, so I continue to brush it off, until early November. It was okay enough to have the characters have similar looking counterparts. It wasn't okay that the counterparts started acting like the characters from the book. The villain is an avid drinker. My coworker works as a bartender. He isn't like a mob boss or anything. He's a villain who subtly befriends the protagonist. I can see that he was trying to befriend me. I don't know if I'm just being paranoid or if I should be friends with him or not. The love interest, well, is in love with the protagonist and we're friends. Though recently he's been showing signs of liking me romantically. Then again, I can't tell if it's the paranoia or not. Ask Reddit. Happened to my mom. She told me in the morning a month or so ago. She apparently had, quote unquote, had quite an experience during the night. She woke up and couldn't fall back asleep. She often has sleep issues. She heard her dog being nervous downstairs. So after a while of listening to this, she decided to go check if everything's okay. She got up, went to the bathroom across the hallway. The door was slightly open and she saw a silhouette. A dark black silhouette. There was no way it was her shadow. There was no light source behind her. She turned the light on and there was nothing there. However, the thrash bag on the trash bin was slightly moving. Like there had been some movement. My mother had just entered the bathroom, so I don't think she caused it. I was listening to this like, what the hell, to reading countless stories of people across the sub. I asked her for more details about the appearance of the silhouette. She said her first thought was Zorro, as in a man dressed in black wearing a hat and a cape. Now my first thought was a hat man, but she wasn't having a sleep paralysis. She's never had it. Maybe just a hallucination but a weird experience anyway. My mom was weirded out and she doesn't believe in that stuff at all, but she was still interested. She jokingly asked me if I was summoning ghosts or something. Hell no. I also find interesting about the story is that two days prior I was trying to open my root chakra for the first time. Doubt it was connected in any way though, but mentioning it nonetheless. Ask Reddit. I decided to take a nighttime stroll sometime between 12 and 1 a.m. I left my apartment. I walked along the road that led to the woods nearby and contemplated on whether to follow the road that led through the woods. I decided against it. I wasn't stupid and it was pitch black with zero lights. You were really only able to see a few feet in front of you. So I decided to head back home. I barely walked 15 feet from the woods and I heard footsteps directly behind me. I turned and saw no one, and it continued every time I started walking back. Problem was, there was no hiding spots for someone to hide if they were following me, 
and the footsteps sounded like they were only two to three feet at most. And I also used to watch those haunted house reenactments, so what I got from those was that ghosts react to fear. So if it was some spirit, I shouldn't act scared. So instead I laughed when I heard the steps again. This time it seemed to stop. I got home and went to bed, and that same night I was awoken abruptly about an hour later to a guy saying, Psst! I looked around. No one was there, so I just said out loud, Not right now. I'm trying to sleep. And I went back to bed. Thing is, if it was just the second thing I could explain it off, but they happened the same night, so it feels like they were connected. It was a one-off as it, you know, as if it never happened. Otherwise, I would have went to go check it out. Ask Reddit. I was raised skeptic. So I tend to lean towards things having a logical answer. But there's been a couple of instances I still couldn't explain entirely until recently. If anybody can hear that that's not gunshots, I'm pretty sure those are fireworks blasting off in my neighborhood, but I can't do anything about it, so I'm going to continue on. <laughs> Just want to note that it's not gunshots, and I'm not um, recording this audio from a gunfight. The most recent was hearing my cabinet door slam closed in the kitchen while I was in the bedroom. <laughs> but before I moved to where I am now, I lived with my ex-fiancé at the time, who would often be at work while I was at home due to opposite schedules. So one of the times I was relaxing in the bedroom at night, my dog and I both heard this woman's voice clear as day as if it were right outside my bedroom go, Jeez. <laughs> so I panicked and listened for a bit and heard nothing else. Went outside with the dog and saw nobody. Then promptly told my ex what happened. And to lighten the situation a bit, we named her Jeez Louise. Turns out, though, when I'm sleep deprived, well, I get visual and auditory hallucinations super easily. So pretty much any ghostly experience I've had since then, I just chalked it up to that. Ask Reddit. A couple of years ago, I was 23 at the time, I was still living with my parents. I was up upstairs in my bedroom hanging out in my room and watching TV. I was on the phone with my friend at the time, and while I was on the phone, I exited my room and went downstairs to have a cigarette. The only other person in my parents' house that day was my dad who later I found out was asleep in his room on the main level. Anyway, I was gone for about seven minutes when I walked back upstairs and entered my bedroom. I was still on the phone at the time, and I walked toward my bed and sat down. Eventually, after 20 seconds or so, I glanced back up to play my TV, and there at the end of my bed was a piece of paper sticking up from the base I just remember not understanding what I was seeing, and never in my life have I so quickly dropped dead silent. I say dropped dead silent in a way to try to explain what it feels like when you're coming to terms with something that your brain isn't ready or fully capable of understanding. I just remember going. Nate. And he kept saying, what? What? I could hardly speak. I quickly said I'll call him back and immediately took, <laughs> took out my phone and took a picture. I took a picture before doing anything else. Before I even studied what the piece of paper was. Before I did anything at all. And I took a picture. I took a picture because I couldn't believe my eyes. I don't know how it got there. Why it was placed the way it was. And why it looked the way it did. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Anyway, it was an old economics paper of mine talking about the government and the divide in our two-party system and the divide that it creates in America. 
I wrote this econ paper three years prior in a college intro to econ course. There was originally two pages to it, but it was missing its second page. The edges of the page were burnt, and there was a big yellow triangle that almost looked like it was highlighted on, smack dab in the middle of the page. It almost looked luminescent, or like a dollar bill does. Anyhow, it absolutely scared the fuck out of me. That paper had been in my closet stacked away with all my other schoolwork, and now it was ripped from the other page and was placed at the edge of my bed, sticking upright for me to be able to see. It was gone for only seven minutes. Nobody could have done that. It was absolutely impossible. Shortly after that bizarre situation occurred, I dodged the hell out of my parents' house, went to a hotel with a friend of mine. The second part of the story is just as scary, but I don't even want to get into that right now. Anyway, I still wish I knew what it meant. I can't tell if it was good or bad. I don't know what the symbolism was, why the paper had weird burns around the edges, and what the fuck the large luminescent triangle meant. I still don't know why or how, but my concept of understanding the world has changed ever since. I was only gone for seven minutes, mind you. Ask Reddit When I was three, my grandfather passed away. I don't really remember him, like at all. I know exactly what he looks like, though, as my grandma still has pictures of him all around her house. And I've seen the home videos of him and myself, and my younger sister when she came along. We were all playing with him, and him lighting a candle at my first birthday, that sort of thing. There is an exception, though. For years, I've had this random memory that must have occurred only a few months or so before his passing. I'm pretty sure in this memory I was three, or very close to it, and my sister was around a year old. I have this very vivid memory of myself sitting at a kitchen bench, my sister in her high chair and my granddad playing pop-up behind the kitchen bench. Like he would duck down behind the bench and do a big pop-up to surprise, making a very funny face each time. I was laughing. My baby sister was doing the typical baby big laughing. It's nothing special in what happened or what went down, but yet it's so strong and vivid. Now, despite how vivid and strong that memory is, I was never sure if it actually happened. Like I said, I was only three. I barely remember my granddad, and apart from that memory, the only thing I really know about him are stories from my mom and grandma, and from the home videos. I could totally be making it up, which is very possible given what we know about memories from young childhood fading or being twisted in the sense that we kind of misremember them. Sometimes we might even have completely false memories. Flash forward to last year when I was pregnant with my first and my friend group. Or when I was pregnant with my first. My friend group were talking about my family and what do they think the baby will look like. I talked about my granddad, how I barely remember him. But I have this one memory and it goes like this. I'm not sure if it was really real, but blah 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 blah. That night after catching up with my friends, I had an incredibly vivid dream. In this dream, the memory was being reenacted. I was watching my granddad pop up and down behind the counter, making funny faces and making me and my sister laugh, just like I remember. But after the fifth or sixth time of him doing it, he pops up but becomes serious, looks directly at me. He tells me that yes, this really did happen. He loved playing this game with us girls. He's happy I remember it. And don't worry, I'm not making a false memory. Everything's all good. Ask Reddit. For context, I believe to this day that the vast majority of all, if not all, paranormal videos and photos have a explanation outside of the paranormal. 
This means that these videos and photos can be easily explained away as either CG poor quality cameras, pareidolia, or outright fakes. Needless to say, I do believe that there still can be paranormal shit that happens. However, at the time when this happened, about eight years ago, and when I didn't believe in ghosts as much, my family and I were staying at Fort Gary Hotel in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I had a very, you could say, spare moments. I decided to explore the hotel because it was, well, absolutely beautiful. I got lost, as I usually do in buildings, since I get directionally challenged the moment I step into one. Anyways, I happened to run into someone that looked like they worked at the hotel. But they weren't house cleaning or a clerk, so I was unsure of their position or job. I asked for directions back to the lobby, since I had to meet my family in a few minutes. The moment I arrived in the lobby and walked past the front desk, a clerk and a security guard were staring at me in shock and with pale faces. The security guard asked me who I was talking with earlier for the directions back to the lobby. I told him I thought it was somebody who worked at the hotel. Well, wouldn't you know? Turns out that floor I was on, can't remember for the life of me, has a bunch of paranormal shit that goes on regularly. I don't know if he was supposed to, but the security guard showed me the footage he had just seen. The person I was talking with never appeared on the security feed, even though they should have been in plain view. It was super creepy because I had shaken this person's hand for some reason and the footage just showed me shaking hands with the air. The person appeared in front of me as any other person would have. When I touched their hand, it felt like any squishy person would normally. And yet they never showed up on the footage. There was no way I could have blocked out the person from view the camera. I'm only 5'6". The security guard even pulled up a second angle for further proof. No one else believes me despite the footage. To this day, I still don't know how to explain it. Ask Reddit I used to rent a townhouse in the woods with my ex. One night I'm out on duty. She calls me about three in the morning, absolutely hysterical. I'm thinking, oh my god, somebody broke in. I gotta race home and help. But it seems the wooden baby gate we used to keep the puppy downstairs flew from the base of the stairs, all the way up the stairs, hitting the ceiling, leaving a mark, and landed in a mangled mess. The puppy was locked in her cage all night, so she couldn't have done it and all the doors and windows were locked from the inside. Later that month, we're in the kitchen having a chat when in front of our very eyes, this big heavy feeder we used for the cat, which was on the countertop as I just cleaned it, it rotated 90 degrees upright onto its side. And then gently, another 90, so as to be upside down. This barely made a tap as it landed. This feeder was heavy. When I tried to recreate it, it made a very loud crash. How could it rotate with only a tap? More crazy things happened too. I would enter the kitchen and then the silverware drawer would bang super loud. The animals would stare at the corner of the room and back away slowly. A dead bolted door would be wide open as soon as you turned. Oh, and the nightmares, man, you wouldn't believe. So not saying I believe in ghosts, but damn, bud. Ask Reddit. So when my mom was in college, she worked at a local restaurant as a server. She's heading home around midnight one night. This is after her shift and a bunch of cops are outside of her apartment. Here's the story as it was relayed to her by the cops and her neighbors. Earlier in the night, the neighbors noticed a guy hanging around her door, acting sketch. They called the police and a report. 
Maybe it was a possible attempted robbery. Police show up and the guy's nowhere to be found. But upon trying to handle, the door to my mom's apartment is open. Neighbors are adamant they never saw the guy leave the area, so the cops decide to go in and look around the place. While inside, they open her closet door and the man is standing there completely naked. He was, of course, arrested and my mom arrived soon after with the police hanging around and let her know what had happened and why they had to go into her house. My mom was so freaked out she drove all the way to her parents' house that night, took the rest of the semester off. It gives me the heebie-jeebies thinking about what would have happened if her neighbors hadn't have, you know, happened to be looking out the window, or if they had decided to mind their own business and not call in, or if the cops had thrown up their hands when they couldn't immediately find the guy that had just left. Very possible I wouldn't be here today. Ask Reddit. So my family has a shore house that's been a part of my family since 1883. Every one of my family stayed in that house. An ex-great uncle died in one of the rooms that I slept in because it was downstairs. I was too afraid to sleep in the upstairs and I stayed there alone. So according to a medium or whatever they're called, it told us it was haunted by my great aunt Beth. I also believe her husband is haunting because of my dad's stories. Anyway, my parents told me stories from back in the day of their own experiences with unexplainable stories. I thought they were made up stories to scare me. Well, one time, me and my buddy were in my living room. I was sitting in a chair that sat next to the door frame that was next to the staircase. It's just me and him in the house when we hear footsteps going up the staircase. We stood up and went to the stairs and we listened as we heard step by step go up the stairs. It was during the day, so it wasn't as scary. Another time in the same house, after assuming the person who haunts the house was my ex-great aunt Beth, I would jokingly talk to the ghost in the house. I wasn't sure if she actually heard me. Well, in my kitchen, we have two long fluorescent light bulbs. One long one and then another one next to it. Well, one didn't work all summer. Like, literally never turned on. Well, after that last day in the house, I was locking the house up for some reason. I'm in the kitchen, and I jokingly say, Okay, Aunt Beth, I'm leaving. Have a good night. Love you. The light bulb that didn't turn on all of summer suddenly turns on. I was so terrified I grabbed my stuff, shut the lights off, and bounced. The last experience was once again in the same house. So even though I was afraid to stay in the upstairs at the night, the only room with AC were the upstairs, and... So in the bedroom, there's a wooden folding door that connects to another bedroom that you have to jane shut, because it keeps the cold air. And then there's the main bedroom door that goes into the main hallway. That door you also have to jam shut because cold air. And the door is expanding from the humidity, so you gotta jam it into the frame. Anyway, one morning I wake up and my bedroom door is wide open and the door across the bedroom is open and the lamp is on the floor. All the doors and windows are locked. I try not to think of anything, but it still freaks me out. So the following night, I have the doors closed. I'm scared, but I fall asleep. I wake up the next morning and now the sliding door is open. My bedroom door is open and the door across the hallway is open. The lamp is now shattered on the floor. It was so terrifying that thank God I didn't witness it or wake up to it. Reddit. So my family and I were living in Germany back in the 1980s. We rented this nice old house. I was two at the time and my mom was pregnant with my first brother. Things didn't really start happening until a few months after moving in. It was pretty weird. The house always had an odd feel to it. 
But you always get that when you move into a new place, right? Started with things not being where you last left them, kitchen cabinets being open. The main thing was the stairs to the attic. Was out in the open in the hall, right next to my brother's room. It was only like six or seven steps up until you got to the ceiling and the latch door. You could get about two steps up and would immediately be filled with overwhelming dread and fear. I can remember only thinking, getting out, get out, get out, get out, get out, over and over, until I could walk away. Friends would come over and go up the steps and sit down. They would get this look on their faces and just start crying uncontrollably. So, all of this to say, one night when I woke up in the middle of the night to use the toilet, which was just across the hallway from my room. After I was done, I sleepily made my way back when I got hit with the coldest blast of air I'd ever felt. I was maybe like five at this time. My neck and back felt tingly. I felt like shivering. I turned to look down the hall and saw the top half of a younger man walking down the hall and then turned to go down the stairs, but just straight up vanished. I was pretty sure I'd dreamt the whole thing up, to be honest. My mom claims that while she was pregnant with my first brother, there was an older man that would stand, quote-unquote, in the doorway and had this aura of, in her words, pure evil and sickness. My mom was super sick, but so was my dad on the nights that this old man was around, at least. During her second pregnancy, she says that the younger man would stand in the doorway, but facing away from the bed and that he made the room feel calm. The man never bothered my mom during this time, but after my second brother was born, he stopped guarding the door. My first little brother would have awful night terrors. He'd wake up screaming at the top of his lungs like he was being murdered. After my second brother was born, he would have the same terrors. They would wake up screaming at the same time. Super weird. I'd have the same nightmare every night for six-ish years and we lived in that house. It was always me standing at the base of the stairs to the attic. Then the door would vanish from under me and I would fall into total darkness. There was no escaping it. I would fall into it every night. Another instance was when my mom told me to stop getting in the cupboards for snacks. I told her I hadn't been in them. She told me to stop lying or I'd be grounded. She came and grabbed me, and later that day took me to the kitchen, pointed me to an open cabinet and scolded me. I argued that I didn't do it. She then pushed me to go and my nose to the corner. She then went back to the kitchen and then all was quiet. Too quiet. Like that eerie quiet that creeps you out. I turned around and my mom just standing in the kitchen doorway, mouth wide open. I asked her if she was okay. She just continued to look in the kitchen, not moving. I walked up to her and looked in to find every cabinet and door open. We just stood there, shocked and scared. My youngest brother was asleep upstairs in his crib, and my other brother was with his dad at the doctor's appointment. The scariest incident was when my mom was able in the dining room and watching TV. My brothers and I were playing upstairs, and I heard crashing, like glass breaking. I ran downstairs and saw my dad rush into the dining room. My mom was just standing there. The dishes were broken on the floor in front of her. My dad asked if she was okay and went to help her. She says, get out. My dad stops and just turns white as a sheet. I guess they'd been hearing the old man in the dreams and nightmares as well, telling them to get out of the house. They didn't tell me till years later. Mom then started screaming, get out, get out, over and over again, ripping things off the shelves and throwing them to the floor. The weirdest and scariest part was when she started shouting at us in fluent German. My mom barely spoke any German, just enough to get by. She spoke French and English at the time. And the look on her face was, well, weird. It didn't look like my mother. It's hard to describe. But she looked older, and her eyes were so full of hate. Never seen my mother look like that before. My father told me to run upstairs and shut the door. He would come get us when it was safe. 
I ran and hid with my brothers in their closet, terrified at what was happening. My dad came up some time later and went to see my mother. She was sitting on the sofa, sobbing. I remember hugging her. She held me so tight I could barely breathe. After that possession happened, my mom called in priests to try to cleanse the house. The owner fully cooperated with us after my mom and dad told him. He claimed the old man we described was his grandfather, who had previously owned the house before dying in it. He has no idea who the young man, though, was. I can remember a priest coming over, and it was so bizarre. He would start to pray and try to rid the home of evil or whatever, and every time something would happen, the phone would ring, the postman would knock, my brothers would cry, a truck drove by with its horn going. But the priest persisted. But as soon as he started up the stairs to the second floor, he fell down them. He claimed he felt two hands push against his chest, and then he said this was beyond him. He left, never heard from the church. The final straw was when I was playing in my room and I was standing in front of my large mirrored closet. It fell on me. Luckily, my bed was right next to me and it stopped the closet from crushing me completely. And remember, I was around six at this time. There was no way for me to be able to tip this closet as it was butted up against the wall. And it was a heavy, solid wood one that came with the house when we moved in. Not to mention, I was standing away from it nearest to my bed. At this point, we were all stressed out, so much so that it was affecting my dad's work. His boss pulled him into the office one day and asked him what was going on. My dad said that he wouldn't have believed him if he told him, but I guess his boss persuaded him to. Turns out my dad's boss was a long time practicing Wiccan and said he could help. Not sure as to how that conversation went down, as my dad said he doesn't really remember all the details but he remembers his boss explaining to him the process of cleansing the house and how he had it done by others before ours. So the day comes when my dad's boss turns up to our house with a bunch of his fellow co-workers and friends. The landlord showed up to help. Everyone gets a task to prevent the cleansing from being stopped. Kind of like when the priest had tried. My dad's boss and another guy go down into the cellar to start and gradually move through the house. My mom and I sat in the living room and a friend had come to take my brothers to her place while this happened. Can't remember why I was at the house, to be honest. These guys got to the attic stairs and shit got weird. The house felt awful, like the air was buzzing with static and I felt my stomach. My mother was feeling it too, as I could see her gagging and trying to hold everything down. The guys opened the attic and started cleansing. You could hear things in the house moving. Not sure what it was, but it sounded heavy. Turns out that the source of all of the things was like the old armoire in the attic. My dad told me the landlord recognized it as belonging to his grandfather before he died. It was full of old clothes. Things like memorabilia. Nazi memorabilia. They all first tried to remove the armoire from the house, but it wouldn't budge. So they took everything out of it and it still didn't budge. They thought maybe it had been nailed to the floor but found nothing holding it down. They eventually called the other guys and six grown men could not move that armoire. Dad said it was the craziest thing he'd ever seen in his life. So, my dad's boss and his other Wiccan friend decided to seal the armoire in a circle of salt and sulfur. Once they'd completed that ritual, they finished the cleansing of the house. And no lie, guys, it was like the house sighed. It felt like a breeze blew through the house, like every door and window would have been open on a windy day sort of a feeling. And by the way, they weren't. Everything was closed during the cleansing. My hair even moved with it. It was so weird. Then silence. Not just audibly, but that uncomfortable, heavy feeling the house had always gone with truly felt empty. Such an odd sensation to me. After the house had been cleansed, the attic was locked up, and that was that. No more apparitions, nightmares, or fear around the attic steps. No more opening cabinets, no more possessions. 
even though it only happened one time. My parents were so happy, and the people who helped out were invited over quite a few times. My dad says he still talks to all of them to this day, and he said he still feels he can't ever thank them enough for saving us from that horrible nightmare. He even became a Wiccan afterwards and still casually practices, but not as much as he used to. Anyhow, that's my long-ass story of the haunted house I lived in as a child. Ask Reddit. I live in the woods in Florida. I'm 13 miles from the nearest anything. And that anything is a gas station. I'm 25 miles from the nearest town. My only neighbors for two miles are my parents who live across the street from me. I'm a single mom. It's just me and my son out here and our dogs. In my living room, I have a giant gray sectional couch in the shape of an L. My son, who was six when this happened, likes to pull up the ottoman making the giant couch like a big bed that he then piles all the blankets and pillows that he owns to make himself a camping nest. He sleeps out in the living room. Now that I've established some background information, here's the actual story. So I'm home from work early-ish one night. My son had built his nest on the couch and passed out early, like 8 p.m., so I had time to myself and a sleeping child. I decided to play some Skyrim uninterrupted for once. I'm playing my game smoking my bowl. I've got my medical card, by the way. Just having a great time when I hear my pit bull. His name was Ares, and he barked. It's not a bunch of barking, just one insistent. Hey, Mom, you left me out. I want to come in. Kind of a bark. Any pet owner should, you know, kind of be nodding their head right now. We all know our pets' voices. I pause and I look at the time, and I say out loud, It's only 8.30, you're fine, it's a beautiful night out anyway. Go back to my game. About half an hour later, he barks again, just that one, Hey mom, you left me out here, kind of a bark. It interrupts my concentration, and I ignore the urge to get up and let him in. I continue playing, because I don't get that much time. I work like 50 hours a week and taking care of my kid in the house when I'm not working. I'm mid in a dungeon quest, and I'm concentrating hard. About every 15 minutes, I hear the one stupid bark, and I start to get really annoyed. Because every time he does it, I get the literal urge to go let him in, and it just tips me out of my train of thought and ruins my game immersion. I'm starting to get angry. If you wanted to let you in, I'd let you in, but you're fine. Finally, he does it that one last time. Most moms know what I mean. I'd had enough. So I toss down my controller, thinking how stupid this dog is, and... As it hits the piles of covers next to me, my kid's buried in, I hear a snore. A dog snore. And I move the blanket to see Aries dead asleep next to my kid. Not a care in his dumb doggy brain. Immediate fear and dread and heaviness like I've never felt washes over me. Can't describe it any better than an ancient fear. It felt old and terrifying, and I literally heard a voice say in my head, don't move, baby. Don't get up. Just keep playing like you don't know anything's wrong. It'll go away. If you take one step toward that door, you're in trouble. I picked my controller back up and kept playing. I heard the bark a few more times, but around 11.45, the air in my house felt normal again. But I slept down on the couch because I wasn't leaving my kid alone. 